Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's study, the first study this week in the morning. And um, we're going to be looking at Daniel 11, verse 3 and 4, really 4 to 6, but here more particularly verse 4, and placing these on a line. So if you can, join me in a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have here this morning, for all the things that you teach us, and for the light that you are giving to our feet. We just pray for your spirit's presence to be here, that you can bless each person, for the struggles that they face each day, that you can bless their families, and uh, Lord, that you can use us to reach those around us. Help us to understand these things that we are studying and to correct any errors that we may have is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning again, everyone. Now, what you see here is um, a little bit of work that I did done to set this up. And i um, just going to change a few things here. Making some of this stuff bigger. So this is a chart of some of the principal dates that we're going to look at. And I don't know if this will work. That yeah, works fine. Just wanted to make things a little bit bigger. Over to the left, you have the verse with the Hebrew numbers for each of the words or phrases that are represented by Hebrew number. And um, but I guess probably before we look at this chart, we're going to have to do a quick review. So we're going to look at these verses that we've been studying. <clears throat> now, we had completed understanding verse 2. That is, we had applied this uh, to Revelation chapter 17, to the, to the seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and we had established that the one that is, is Biden, uh, not Trump. And so that we are in the time of the one that is, which is Greece. And the symbol that placed us there, does anybody remember uh, the study that we had done that placed uh, Biden as the one that is? It was based on a study that Colin had done. What, what was the date that helped us establish that? Anybody remember? Okay, I'll show you the diagram. So this is the diagram that we had. And this diagram has uh, 1,533 days, 219 weeks. Um, and there's two different periods of them. There's one that ends on March 27th, 2021, and March that ends on January 20th. 2021. These are 65 days apart, 66 exclusive. Um, and the 1,533 days on the top, that goes from November 9th. Uh, I'm not sure why I have November 9th. It's not November. I did some, oh, yes. Uh, November 9th, 2016. So that's going to be the one that Colin did, right? November 9th, and that's going to be 65, 66 days. Uh, to the Glen Park Paneum one, and that is the one where I'm counting 1,533 days to March 27th. So we have these two periods. We can see it's a prophetic mirror, parallels in some ways uh, the prophetic mirror of uh, the 22520s. Here, instead of 46 days marking the end of the two periods, it's going to be 65, but of course that's a number in the prophetic mirror. And it places January 20th, 2021 with... Uh, 1798, right? So, so we have that significant number there. So the January 20th date is the date that we're looking at. It comes from this study. So when we go back to uh, Daniel chapter 11, and we begin looking at Greece, that is Alexander, right? We know that uh, 
Xerxes loses to Greece. He's going to stir up all against the realm of Grecia. He's going to lose to Greece. And then we're going to have a mighty king stand up. And um, he shall do according to his will. So that characteristic would place a parallel between Alexander and the papacy prior to 1798. So what we're doing is we're taking this and we're applying it out in our line that Alexander is going to apply, that the fall of his kingdom is going to apply to the fall of the Soviet Union. So um, there are some interesting details here that we um, are going to look at dealing with the Hebrew numbers uh, that illustrate that. Now, the other thing that we had done is we had looking at looked at the Afghan war. Now, why did we look at the Afghan war? The, the that is the, the Soviet Afghan war. Why why did we look at it? Because we looked at the dates of it, right? And it's going to have some significant dates in it. But we're going to see that this is this mighty king. This is the Soviet Union standing up in this war it's going to be a proxy war against the u.s but it's going to be battle uh, fought out in afghanistan for uh, nine years and a um, couple of months nearly so anybody remember what what why we looked at that war what is it about the dates so the afghan war goes from December 24th, 1979 to February 15th, 1989. Why is that significant? Well, we're thinking about when the Pope was taken captive, uh, Pius VI on February 15th, 1798. Okay. Yeah, so we have that the 15th date that is marking the end of that war. We also have... December 24th. Now, December 24th isn't quite December 25th, but it does relate to December 25th. That's Christmas Eve, and we know that Christmas Eve relates to Christmas, right? And that December 25th date uh, becomes part of the fall of the Soviet Union. That is, in 1999, the Soviet Union is going to fall on December 25th. Uh, so 1991. So that's going to be from the beginning of that war in 1991 to the complete fall of the Soviet Union in 1991 is going to be a period of 12 years, right? So, so that seems significant uh, in and of itself. Now, so the fall of the Soviet Union then has a, to it, it has the Soviet-Afghan War. And then it has, of course, uh, November 9th, 1989, and it has December 25th, 1991. So it has these, these dates in there. Now, we also noted that from 1798, February 15th, 1798, to February 15th, 1989 is a period of 190 years. And that's significant because it has a symbol of 11.9 in it. Um, and it's also... Uh, the center year, um, if I remember correctly, uh, dealing with the 70 weeks. So if you uh, look at the center year, it's going to be um, uh, 191 BC, right? So 191 BC that uh, Colin had presented in the study. I'm getting noise from somewhere. I'm not sure where that's coming from. So, so we have that 191 BC, and uh, Dwight had done a study during our camp meeting in the summer regarding the 191 and its relationship to 11.9 and 9.11. So, so we can see why why that is. Um. So um, when we look at this verse, what we see is we see verse 3 
This is representing that war um, or that period of time in which he rules with great dominion. He does according to his will. And when he stands up, his kingdom shall be broken. So that's going to represent the fall of the Soviet Union. And shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven. So we're going to look at this as well and the significance of it. And not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled for his kingdom, shall be plucked up, even for others besides those. Now, I've worked on some of this myself here a little bit, uh, some of these numbers, some of the math, but I haven't put it all together yet. So we're going to do that. And, and what we're saying that this verse four represents uh, part of our history. Now, verse five and six also has some symbols in it, which we're, we're still going to take time to look at. Uh, we looked at the end of years um, and the significance of some of these numbers in verse six as well. But today we're just going to look at verse four. At least I think it, it might take all of the, all of today to get through verse four in drawing these things on the line. So uh, here is the, the line that I'm beginning to draw. And you can see I have um, a line drawn out, some of these dates. I have uh, the Afghan war there represented. It's a period of 3,341 days. You might want to switch your screen. Sorry about that. That's better. So you can see that now. So you can see this is uh, December 25th, 79 to February 15th, 1989. This is going to be... Um, let me see if I can find this here. Don't like the way this goes, but basically, oops. This is going to reach back to 1798. Um, I'm just going to put this in here. So from 1798 to the end of this war, right, to the February 15th, 1989. So I could probably put here to 15. Oops. The wrong keyboard chosen here. I do. That's going to be a period of one hundred and ninety one years. Right, so <clears throat> okay, and then we have 276 days um, to the fall of the Soviet Union beginning on November 9th, 1989. That occurs uh, after a period of 776 cardinal days, 777th day is December 25th, 1991. Um, the number 276, it has, it's a different iteration of uh, uh, 627, um, June 27. Uh, but it's also um, the divisors. If you take the divisors of 276, they add up to 360. So it, it has some characteristics relating to time. <clears throat> uh, and then we have September 11th on here. Uh, and then we have, we have to put some other dates on here. So these are just, these dates will change here. Now, we looked at um, some of these numbers. So we have this number, when he shall stand up. Now, what I have there is a chart um, of some of these dates that we're going to put on this line. Uh, but when I have when he shall stand up, I take this number, um, 
5975. I don't know if everybody can see that there very well. If I zoom in. So you can see this 5975. Um, and this number, if you look at it here, it shows up on this chart. That is, if we count from September 11th uh, to uh, uh, January 20th, 2018, we get 5975 days. Now, we can see here that this January 20th date, what does it relate to? Uh, we talked about it earlier. If we look at the date three years later, uh, January 20th, 2021, right, we have the inauguration of Biden. So this, it brings us to a date three years before Biden's inauguration, so September 11th, 2001 to January 20th, 2018, 5,975 days. So, so we just say that this number, when he stands up, it relates to our earlier study on the presidents of the United States. And it's it's covering the same history, but this one is dealing with the fall of the Soviet Union. So, so we, we still are just looking at the symbols. We're not really making an interpretation of what it means. Now, um, it says, you should stand up, that's that number. His kingdom shall be broken and divided toward the four winds of heaven. Now here we have some interesting numbers. The first one I want you to look at is his kingdom. So the Hebrew number for kingdom is 4438. Now we don't have 4438 on this chart, but we do have 4384, the same four digits. So can we take uh, some digits and look at an iteration of those digits as significant? You can see I have 4384 here. That's going to be from the start of the Soviet-Afghan War to the fall of the Soviet Union on December 25th, 1999, 1991. So is that significant? Can I take that word kingdom, 4438, and look at the span of days as 4384 and see that there is a relationship? Can we do that? Yeah, I'd have to agree potentially. Okay, potentially. Okay, yeah. now what, one one question. I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay, in your, okay. In your second yeah. column, you have a a very strange number configuration at the at the head. Yeah, that's just because I had the wrong keyboard selected when I put that. Okay. There. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, potentially you could have you could have this. Yeah. Because okay. you, you've got the, you have the fours, you have the three, and you have the eight. They're just in a different order. Right. Now, you'll see also that word kingdom is uh, going to be later in the verse, where it says, according to his dominion, which he ruled, um, for his kingdom shall be plucked up, even for others besides those. So we're going to have, um, yeah, so Gorbachev resigned uh, 12, 26, 91. I know that. Um so anyway, we're going to have that word kingdom show up again. Um, but it's also going to be connected to here. Uh, we're going to see another number according to his dominion. Uh, nor according to his dominion. That word dominion is 4915. Now, we also have another iteration of that number. And that's 4591. And that's going to be from the end of the Afghan war to um, to the um, to September eleventh, two thousand and one. So we have two examples of that um, in this verse. 
where we can take the numbers and we can place them on dates that we have already established as part of this history, right? So does that make sense to people that we can do that? Because now we have two witnesses. I would, I, I would stand by potentially. Okay, you would still say potentially? Yeah. Okay, so it, even it, though we have these two, we already have these dates in there, and it just it happens twice. I, uh, I understand. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm walking through the logic on this, so. Okay. Okay, so we have that example of the number. Now, at the end of the study on Thursday, I had said that we have a mathematical formula where it says his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven. And so what I did is I took the number broken and I divided it. So I divided it in half because the word divided means to cut in half. And and then I I took the four winds and I added that to that number. And the number I, I got well, is, um, oh, first, even before I do that, let's just look at the four winds. So if we take the four winds, 702 and 7307, and we add them together, we get 8,009. So I just want to note here, we have 8,009 on this list. I had put it as December 20th, 2011. So if you count from uh, the end of the Afghan war, you get this 8,009. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take this 8,009 and we're going to add half of 7665, right? So half of 7665, um, you're going to get, of course, 0. 0.5. But we're just going to ignore that. We get 38. Three, two. Now, if you look from that date, uh, January 11th, 2011, you'll see if, if we go here on this column, you can see this here, and we go three, uh, 3832, which is half of 7665, it brings us to July 18, 2021. So that's simply um, uh, this date here, this um, or this number here. Um, is that the number? Uh, no, it's going to be. Yeah, I think that's the number that we got. Yeah, so that's going to be 8009 plus 3832 which is going to be 11,841. That is, if we take this as a, a, as a calculation, as a formula, broken is divided into 3832, and we add it to the four wins. And if we do that, we get this July 18, 2021. Now, of course, that's one year to the day past July 18, 2020. Now, we're going to have a presentation by Dwight on that date, on July 18, uh, 2021. That's on the Sabbath. And he's going to, and so I'm just going to look this up. No, so it's going to, he's going to have the presentation on the 17th, pardon me. So in 2021, uh, we're going to have this presentation on July 17th, about July 18th. And um, you're going to note 160 days to December 25th, 2021, from July 18th. Correct. Right. So that's going to give us a December 25th date. Now, I did put it on the chart here. I did put a December 25th, 2023 date. It's just the charts only give me 10. Uh, I can only uh, save 10 um, dates. Uh, but I think that's significant then that we can um, uh, should, oh, there's 14 rows that we can do now. Well, that would be nice. 
So maybe I should redo this chart and put in the extra rows. Um, but anyway, that's that's all I did. I only thought we could save 10 rows. Um, but that July 18, 2021 date then becomes significant because we, we've already marked it in our history. Even though it's one year after July 18, 2020, it was marked. And the 161 days from uh, July 17, 2021, is a division of the 777 into 616 and 161. So Dwight was focusing upon the 160 days. Okay. So from July 18th. <clears throat> then we have, um, uh, so there are some other things I'm trying to remember, everything that we've done. Oh, yes. Now, the one that's actually quite interesting if I take the four winds of heaven, so we have these numbers, uh, 702 and 7307. So that's 8,009. And we add them to 8,064. Uh, we're going to get the number 16,073, right? Right. So 8,009 plus 8,064. So the, the phrase, the four winds of heaven, if we take each of those Hebrew numbers and add them together, we get a period of time that goes from December 24th, 79, and we would do an inclusive count, and it would bring us to December 25th, 2023. That's a date that's coming up in our lines. So we got the December 25th date. So, you know, technically, if you if you look at that, it's a period of. Um, uh, so seventy nine eleven plus twenty three. So it's a period of how many years? One, six. Seven. So you're going to have uh, twenty one plus twenty three. So it's a period of. 44 years. Right. So it's a period of 44 years from the beginning of this and, and one day, if we do it in as, as an inclusive count. So 16,173 uh, inclusive days ends up being 44 years and one day. Now, is that significant that we can take the four wins? And we can uh, spread them over this hi this history, or am I just way off base here with all of this math? No, I think you're making some very valid points with everything else considered. Okay, because all we're trying to establish here is something that we suggested. We suggested that this verse relates to our history relates to the fall of the Soviet Union and that the Soviet Union here is this power that is Greece, that is it's the globalists. So, so we already understand this. It's just, can this verse be applied in this way? That if we take Alexander's kingdom and um, we can parallel it, parallel it to the fall of the Soviet Union. And, and it seems that we can, that we can parallel the fall of the Soviet Union to the fall of the papacy in 1798, because there are two different times of the ends, 1798 and 1989. In 1798, it's going to be the globalists, right? France, atheism, Egypt coming against uh, the papacy. And then in 1989, the roles are going to be reversed. And so we can show then that this history is connected um, in many different ways that we already have established. But the 191 years uh, ties into this February 15th, 1989. So, you know, when we look at the time of the end, of course, we mark November 9th, 1989, right, as the time of the end. But we know that it's it didn't just happen in a day. 
that there was a lot of things that that happened beforehand. And first was this this war, this proxy war. And, and that war ended, why? Why did the war end? Did this have anything to do with the fall of the Soviet Union? Why did it end? Because of the economic burden on on Russia, on the Soviet Union. Okay, but yeah, but they chose to end it. Uh, their withdrawal from Afghanistan, right? So I mean, they're going to start this in on May fifteenth, nineteen eighty eight. We don't have that date on here. They're going to start it. It's going to end on uh, February fifteenth, nineteen eighty nine. Um, so it's going to be because of Mikhail Gorbachev. He's going to become the general secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, right? <clears throat> so, so what is his thinking? We know that there is this economic pressure that's being placed upon the Soviet Union. And we know it was definitely economic. What else? I'm just not quickly recalling. Um, so well, what was what was Gorbachev trying to do in the Soviet Union? He was trying to reform what had gone on in the Soviet Union. Okay. Yeah. So so they have a thing called perestroika. What is that? Restructuring. Yeah, it's restructuring. So um, now that's going to start, um, you know, once Gorbachev comes into power, right? Um, so there's there's a lot of changes that are being made in the Soviet Union. So um, so we have per perestroika. So oh, that would have a part to play in it as well, because and why they they need this. Um, um, and they also have a thing called glasnost, which means transparency, right? So there's these two Russian words that are being talked about at that time. So he wanted to uh, to change the economy from a command economy, um, right? So I mean, it, it's it's kind of a mixed economy, maybe is the best way we could look at it. So moving away from more communism to a type of socialism. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are unhappy. And the economic pressure put on by the, the U.S. Um, is, is definitely weakening the economy in the Soviet Union. And so they're going to, to make these changes. Okay. So we can see that the, the Soviet-Afghan war ends as part of the fall of the Soviet Union, right? But it's not just that they lose the war, okay? Okay, so we, we can agree with that. That works. Okay. So, so this is all part of this history. So that's what we, we can decide here. I mean, we, we can look at this. We can say that this is 1989, the time of the end.
but it's it's including this war in here, the Soviet-Afghan war. And so when we put this on a line, we can see, you know, where is the time of the end? The time of the end is still going to be the same place. But you have this, this period of time in which you have this war. You could say it's it's the period of darkness or something like that. Um, but the Soviets are fighting against uh, the United States through this proxy war in Afghanistan. And then 276 days from when that war ends, the, the wall, the Berlin Wall, falls. And then we have 77 inclusive days, um, or if we want to count 777 days to Gorbachev's resignation on December 26, 1991, you could do that. But but the point is, this history is well established with in connection with our history. But we do have these other numbers, right? The 5975, the 4438, and we can take iterations of those numbers and match them up um, to the beginning of the Afghan war and the end of the Afghan war. So I think that's very significant. So if I want to, um, I guess, illustrate this, make this clear here, we can take this number, I'm just gonna give it a color. Uh, I don't know how I do this. I guess I can highlight it as yellow and connect it to this, um, where is it here? That one's gonna be, where is it? This one. Okay, so that number is gonna be highlighted, just matching these numbers. This number here, uh, I'm gonna highlight. It's a different color. So that's this one. And we also have this number later on, so I'm just gonna match it. Uh, I guess we could have included this. And then I have um, this number here, the 4915. And I'm just going to highlight it. So you can start to see that these, these numbers are not arbitrary. And then I can take... Um, all of these, the four winds of heaven. So I'm just going to do it this way. Just gonna mark the H's here. And show that that's going to add up to this number, right? But I also have the mathematical formula where I take uh, this number, I'll do it like this. Um, I'm going to divide it and then add to it these two numbers. Oops. Just want this part of the number, not the whole thing. Oh. Now those numbers, like colors are kind of close together, but anyway, you can kind of see how that works. So that number is going to give me um, this number. So we start to see things. Of course, the four winds themselves uh, can give me this number. 8009. Um, so we start to see that we have some patterns here. Uh, we have um, the 8009 is going to mark January 20th, 2011. That's just the four winds themselves, not the four winds of heaven. And then we have um, uh, the 5975 giving us January 20th, 2018, seven years later. And then um, I simply marked this January 20th, 2021 date, which is the date for Biden. 
and uh, I haven't established any numbers there other than we can see that that's 10 years from January 20th, 2011. Um, so any anything else here that we we should note? I know I've done all this work and I haven't really participated other than me telling you. And there's probably more here. But is this not enough to establish that uh, this narrative is describing our history? That's the main thing here. I think it's establishing a good prima facie case. Okay. And then we can see here, just to make this one clear, the four wins. Um, so I'm going to just put that number in there. Uh, that's going to be uh, eight zero eight thousand and nine. So 8,009 days. That's going to be the four wins. Now that's going to be from um, February 15th, 1989. So I probably have to put it here from the end of this to September 11th. So you can see that the end of this war is connected with September 11th, 2001 by a symbol of the four winds. Is, is that seem... Uh, symbolically relevant in how we understand these lines. Because what are the four winds representing? Um, you try to war. Okay, yeah, and, and we're going to say, you know, that it's connected to Islam as well, right? But it's not just about Islam. Now, we can see, of course, the Afghan war is about Islam, right? So we can see that that war and, and the end of that war is connected to, um, now I put it at September 11th. It's actually not September 11th. It goes to, I don't know where, where I need September 11th. Well, that was a different one. So that's going to be part of me. Um, we got to do this differently. So 4591. That's 4591 days, and I have to put in this other date. So I'm doing this wrong. I knew I must have been doing something wrong. Um, so this is going to go uh, January 20th. 2011, that's what we want here. And there we go. And then we're going to take this and put in this. So now we have to connect uh, the end of this war. to um, uh, January 20th, 2011. Now, and we know that's an inauguration date, but is there an inauguration in 2011? Technically, yes. Okay, so so what happens in 2011? Those that were elected to the House and Senate in 2010 would have been installed. Right, so, so there's always an inauguration if there's people that are elected, right? Correct. Okay, so, so there's people, no, we have the president who's also inaugurated, 
but he would have been inaugurated because um, the election was in 2008, right? It was election in 2008 and 2012, and then the inaugurate inaugurations. Am I doing that right or not? Just trying to remember. So inauguration in 2009. The 2000, 2008 would have been inaugurated in 2009. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so so we know in 2017 we have an inauguration. That's going to be Trump, right? So that's going to be eight years after 2009. So so we have inaugurations that are occurring um, with presidents every four years. So this 2011 one is not an inauguration of a president, but it is a January 20th date. And we already have another January 20th date. That's going to be 2018. So that's going to be seven years later. But this one is 2018. Um, that's going to be one year after um, we have uh, a president inaugurated. So it's going to be one year after Trump was inaugurated, right? So January 20th, 2018. And that's going to be... Uh, 5975. That's going to count from September 11th, 2001. Now then, um, so we would, you know, we can put this in here. I'm going to put this other inauguration date in here. So this is going to be 1 2018. So just put in 18. here and that's going to be the 5975 okay so we can see that we have uh these Hebrew numbers that connect us to these uh, January 20th dates. <clears throat> now, in this one I put on my chart, I put January 20th, 2021. I didn't put January 20th, 2024. Um, now that date is going to be... Um, uh, 1,690 uh, something. So I'm just trying to 25, 99 or something like that. Um, so so I could put that on this chart, the, gen, the one that's coming up. So that we're going to have another inauguration of a president. We don't know who. We don't know whether it's Republican or Democrat. We don't know if it's Trump or Biden or some other person that we've never even thought of. Right. But there is going to be another inauguration. Um, so that's going to be. Six. So 26 days after that. So 16,000, so 26 days after that, um, December 25th, 2023. Okay, so when we look at this verse, it says, when he shall stand up. So that's going to take us from September 11th to this inauguration date. His kingdom, that's going to give us December 25th, 91, shall be broken, right? And so, I mean, his kingdom is broken technically on December 25th, 91. That's the end of the Soviet Union. And But we're going to take the word broken shall be divided. So we're going to cut broken in half. 
uh, towards the four winds of heaven. So we're going to take half of 7665 and add it to 8009. And we're going to get this number that is 18841, which is the number of days from the end of the Soviet-Afghan War to July 1821. Now, we also have the phrase, the four winds of heaven, spanning this whole period from the beginning of the Afghan war to December 25th, 2023. We just have a symbolic date there. We don't know that December 25th, 2023 is significant in any way yet. Right? We know we'll have a January 20th, 2024 that follows 26 days later. Anything else that, that we should be able to see in the numbers here on the left with the numbers in the chart? You know, you could add lots of different numbers together and try to find different things. Now there's another one there um, that's not in this verse. Uh, how did you how did you get to sixteen oh seventy two for December the twenty fifth? That's the four winds of heaven added together. It's sixteen seventy three in 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 an in an inclusive count. This chart only shows it as a, a cardinal count. So if I add them up together, it's sixteen hundred and seventy three days. And if I count from December. 24th, 79, 1979, to December 25th, 2023, it's 16,073 days. The same number of days as taking the four winds of heaven and adding them together. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, now there is another number in there um, that connects to December 25th, uh, 2023 as well. So, um, I don't know if people uh, see what I'm talking about, but I want you to think about it. There's some number there on the bottom of this chart, so connected with the, this date, that is significant. So which date are you referring to? Date on the... What? The last date on the chart, December 25th, 2023. So are you looking at this in line with 9-11, where if we rearrange the numbers on December 25th, 2023, we, we come up with 1840 instead of 8140. Well, that's kind of interesting. It, it is the number 8140, but it's 8141 inclusive days. Okay. And when we look at um, Daniel 11, verse 6, so it's not in this verse, but it's in Daniel 11, verse 6, we already noted this number. And that's going to be in the end of years. Right. So the word years, Shana, is 8141. So we have a second witness for this as being the end of years. Does that make sense? Okay. But now, if you go back to your chart for just a second, and I know that this is off the general topic of, of what we've been looking at today. Yeah. The number just above that from 718 of 21. Yeah. 
7250. If we rearrange that, you come up with 2570, mm -hmm. which would be a 2520 or seven times plus 50 of what we've talked about before. Yeah, so the week of Christ. Correct. Pentecost, Feast of Weeks. Yeah, okay. Interesting there, yeah. So, so, yeah. Go on. Looking at looking at those, it just gives you get, gives a little bit of a another um, witness to this. So there's, like I said before, this this is establishing a pretty good prima facie case mm -hmm. to, what, to what you've been addressing. Yeah, so we can take this 8141 here, right? We can see that's going to be the end of years, right? So if we can, so this is the end of our chart, right? It's going to take the four wins. The four wins are going to bring us from the beginning of the Afghan war to December 25th, 2023. And that's going to be a second witness is from September 11th. We're going to have this end of years. Right. So this word years here, we could just simply do well, this. Um, need a transparent color. Just do like, whoops, ended up getting two boxes here. Let's see this again. So I want this. You know, this end of years, that's going to match up with that. And we know that this is a symbol for 11.9. So the fact that we can count from 11.9, the end of years as 8141. So that's an inclusive count. I think is pretty significant to establish this line. That we have the four winds give us that year, that date, and also the end of years gives us that date. So if we're going to to take this here on the chart, we would have to put this as 2023. And we've already been marking December 25th as significant, right? So in our history. Okay. Now, now, what about this number um, seven zero nine three end the end of years? I mean, we have the we have a number seven zero nine three. We haven't done anything with it, and I haven't tried anything with it. And one of the ways I usually do this with a number, I'll just show you. You know, when I when I'm looking at a number, you know, let's say seven zero nine three, I might first just divide it by three sixty five and a quarter, just to see how long it is. So it's a period of nineteen years, and multiply it by three sixty five point two five, um, and one hundred and fifty three days. So. Now, the other thing about it, even the fraction at the end um, is 19 years and 0.4195. And that is another iteration of that, uh, those numbers, 4915 instead of 4195. But anyway, um, so there are some symbols in there. But it's 19 years and 153 days. So that's five months, 19 years, five months. 
is there any span of time? We don't have one here on this chart that's 19 years and five months. But uh, could we place it somewhere? Oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this one. That's just my chart. Here we go. So 7093 as a number, 19 years, five months. Now, if we count, because I think we, we looked at this before, right? So we did look at this before when we were dealing with Stephen, right? Because if you count from September 11th, 2001, you get February 11th, 2021. Okay, so that's going to be 157 days before July 18, 2021. So remember, we had looked at that, Stephen. Stephen was in there with um, uh, the span of time, 11,900 days to September 11th. And so, so we could mark the end of years in connection with 9-11 with, with Stevens. So... So we can say then that the end of years should be counted from 9-11, should be counted from September 11th. And so, so it's just another witness for the fact that the end of the years is being counted from 9-11. We have Daniel 11-6, which is 9-11, if tipped over, and we have this um, 7093 that gives us a symbol that ties us to 9-11. Okay. <clears throat> now we, we do have these uh, January 21st dates. So, I mean, or January 20th dates, which we're gonna have to address as well. But yeah, I think um, just, you know, if you're just looking at this, it makes a lot of, it makes a lot of sense. It shows that there is the connection between these dates and our lines. Uh, but we have more dates that, that have to be understood. That is, this first part is going to bring us to the time of the end. And then we're going to have September 11th, 2001. But it's going to, to tie us to these January 20th dates. But we also have this July 18, 2021 date. So we have to put it in here somehow and decide what that means. I'm just going to copy this, move it over. So somewhere over here we have, uh, well, I'm just going to put it here at the end because that's the, Now it's 890 days from July 18, 21 to December 25th, 2023. Any significance with 809 or 890, pardon me. So 
890 days. Any significance in that? Are you looking at two and three quarter year? Okay. So if we take it as um, so it's going to be um, two prophetic years and 170 days. Right. Sorry. Yeah. So it's going to be um, so 170 days. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have an answer to it. I'm just asking this if there's anything we can, we can see there. Um, because we know that there's 160 days to December 25th, 2021, right? So that's simply if you take 161 plus 365 plus 365, you're going to get uh, 891. So... I guess we'd actually have to count. Yeah, that's right. So we'd have to count from the yeah, 18th, so 60. So 890 days. Yeah, we have a leap. A leap. Do we have a leap here and there? No. I'm sure why. Plus 160. So that ends up being 890. So if you take two years plus 160 days, obviously that's going to give you 890. Eight ninety in a duodecimal form is six twenty two, which is June twenty second. Interesting date or symbol, but what we don't know here is what this means, right? As far as we we've, we've been able to lay this out, we know it has to do with our history. It's going to give us some symbols: January twentieth, July eighteenth, December twenty fifth. Um. So just that verse gives us that verse six witnesses to it. And it's showing that the end of days is December 25th or the end of years is December 25th, 2023. So whatever that means, because we don't, it's a future date. We have no idea what it means, but we know that in that. So if we go back to the scriptures here, so I know we're picking at this pretty slowly. But we know that the king of the south shall be strong and one of his princes and he, and he shall be strong above him and have dominion and his dominion shall be a great dominion. So we know that this is referencing the United Nations. That is, this is referencing, even though the Soviet Union is fallen, it's not the end of the Soviet Union. It's not the end of, of spiritualism. But it's not the end of globalism, of that power, of communism. It's the end of the Soviet Union. But it's not the end of communism. That is what the Soviet Union stands for still continues. And then it just says, in the end of years, they shall join themselves together. For the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. And he shall not retain the power of the arm. Neither shall he stand, nor his arm. And she shall be given up, and they that brought her, and he that begat her, and he that strengthened her in this times. So we have the September 11th date symbolized. We have the end of years, which brings us to 
December 25th, 2023, right? Which would parallel the end of the Soviet Union in 1991. So, so what else do we do here with this? What do we do with this story? Where are we going to place this story? Because that was, we were studying this before and we tried to look at this story, but if this has to do with the end of years, this might still be a future event. Right? And if it's a future event for the king's daughter of the south, she'll come to the king of the north and make an agreement. This would be a league that we could see as being the Sunday law. Is that possible? Now, we already have December 25th as a symbol of the Sunday law in our history. And we know these anniversary dates are important. Okay, anything else? This has just been a lot, kind of a mind-stretching study today. Yes, yes, it is. But, but it does help us to understand verse 6, I think, that we can see that this is referring to the Sunday law. At least connected with it. So the king's daughter of the south. So we're saying the south here is globalism. And they have a daughter. Right? So this is some kind of church. Ideology, right? Religious philosophy. It's going to come to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she's going to fall again, right? So the south is going to fall, right? Just as the Soviet Union did, right? She will not retain the power of the arm, neither shall... Um, now, it says she shall not retain the power of the arm, neither shall he stand, nor his arm. So he's the king of the north, right? The king of the north is not going to stand, nor his arm. And she's not going to retain the power of the arm. And she shall be given up, and they that brought her, and he that begat her. Right? So that's the one that begat her. And he that strengthened her in these times. So who is that he? Is that she shall be given up, and they that brought her. And he that begat, begat her, so that's going to be the, kid, the daughter's father, right? So that's the king. So that's the king of the south. He will be given up. So what is this illustrating? So the king of the south is going to come and make a leap. We know what it refers to historically. The question is, what does it refer to in our line? If we're going to tie this to 9 of from 9-11 to December 25th, 2023. Well, again, I'm thinking of when uh, Trump and the Pope met and the Pope looked so furious at the end of that meeting and I think that's when 
the Pope was trying to encourage Trump to to form a Sunday law, like to impose a Sunday law, and failed. But beyond that, I think it's when they do impose the Sunday law, like further on from twenty three, right? It will eventually all come to naught. The King of the South will come to naught. The King of the North will come to naught. The Sunday law will come to naught, and Christ will reign. Right. Yeah. So I think this is illustrating the Sunday law. Now, you know, it's placing it here, and we're not saying the Sunday law is happening on the December 25th, 2023, right? We're just looking at this as a symbol, because December 25th is a symbol of the Sunday law in our history, right? We can look at it in 508, uh, the baptism of Clovis, but there's other December 25ths. They become prophetically significant. We had it December 25th, 2021. One, symbolizing a Sunday law. And so again, we have a December 25th, this time 2023, symbolizing a Sunday law. But we're not marking a Sunday law there. So we still have other numbers to analyze, which uh, we haven't. What about the number 2,220? This is the arm. That's basically six years and one month. Six years and 20, 29 days. Probably a bit, yeah, that's a 365 day. Well, Do we have any? 222 is third of 666. When you're talking about arm, you're talking about armed forces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The military. Okay. Okay, so something. So that, what yeah. about then the arm being like the threefold power to reach a third of six six six? I don't know. Maybe I'm getting a little weird, but okay. Um, Force of man, right? It's man and Satan working together to try to yeah. turn the whole world into Satan's kingdom. Six six six. Okay. Um, so let me see. I'm going to go back to I guess, just looking at some dates here that we have. So we, there's some dates that, you know, we haven't put in here that we probably could. And I'm going to spend a bit of time analyzing these dates more. Um,
Okay, so I can't I can't see anything with that offhand. Now, now it's interesting when we have this um, uh, calculation, right? The one that uh, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven. Now, now we did a calculation using broken, dividing it into two, and then adding it to the four winds. The four winds. Now. We also could maybe do another another calculation. So we 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 could divide the kingdom because it says the kingdom shall be broken. So it's going to be broken and divided. Um. So. I doing so two one nine so I divided the kingdom in into half and if we add it to the four winds of heaven um, four winds of heaven if we just add it to the four winds let's see what happens there okay so we get three zero two eight I don't know if that's significant. So there is just other things that we can do. Right? There's you know, there's probably a lot more. Any other thoughts about this? Not at the moment. Okay. Um I don't know what I'm doing here. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I have to think about this a little bit more. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. I know if we count from September 11th, you can get 3028 inclusive days to December 25th, uh, which is going to be um yeah, so it's going to be like eight years and um and plus later but anyway so just to kind of sum this up so we've done all this work we can see that there is uh, a structure here And we just haven't drawn any real conclusions of what this means, other than that we can see that it's it's our history. And so we're going to have to finish this and put it on a line and try to make some more sense out of it. And the thing is, there's probably other dates that we need to have in here that the numbers are going to show us. We just don't have them all. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Not right now. Okay. That, so I know you're going to have to process this. We'll come back to, to it tomorrow. We'll go through it again and then see what other things we can find. Okay. So let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning and for each person involved. We know that 
this is a lot of things for us to take in. And so we need your help in processing these things and understanding them and applying them to these prophecies to give us light for our feet. Be with each person. May you bless them and help them in their personal walk with you. May your angels watch over them, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.